Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now, Mineral Resources and Energy Minister Kwede Mantashe has again lost the legal uh, battle over his sacking of anti-nuclear activist Peter Becker from the National Nuclear Regulator Board. The Western Cape High Court found Mantashe's axing of Becker was unconstitutional. The court also refused his application to appeal against the court ruling. Now, what's next for Peter Becker? Does he go back to, going, to doing his job, rather, on that board as a Appointed by uh, civil society organizations. Uh, let's speak to him now. He joins us on the line from Cape Town. Mr. Becker, thank you very much for your time here on ENCS. Of course, that's our first question. Uh, what happens now? Do you continue with your job, um, you know, in sitting on a board uh, that looks after, um, you know, things in a department of a minister that doesn't want you there? Well, good afternoon, and, and it's good to be with you. Yes, so my approach to it all is I think that the work of the nuclear regulator is incredi incredibly important. It's the body that's responsible for keeping the environment and public safe from the dangers of, of radioactivity and nuclear installations. So I would like to return to my duties there as soon as possible. And I think the uh, two court cases or, or court rulings that have come out have made it very clear that there was no misconduct on my part and there was no basis for my dismissal from those uh, from that position. So yes, I'm hoping that we can go forward with this and um, put it behind us and get on with the important work of the regulator. Mm. Does this also speak to the notion that uh, government officials, ministers, etc., uh, don't take kindly to being uh, challenged by civil society organizations and that's why in some departments uh, there's always this rift between the two? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, oversight is always slightly uncomfortable uh, in any situation. And that's healthy. There's meant to be a certain tension between a board and management. And that's what the function of oversight is. And I must say that when I was appointed, and I'm, it's well known that I believe nuclear power doesn't uh, have a necessary place in South Africa. So it was impressive when the minister appointed me. And I know many people were impressed because it appeared at the time that the minister welcomed a, a diverse a set of views on the board and realize that that diverse set of views will lead to the strongest regulator. Uh, so it uh, was a disappointment when then it emerged that because um, uh, of this imagined misconduct that he took these radical steps to, to have me removed. And in fact, the latest news that hasn't been shared yet is that despite the ruling from the judge of the High Court that said there's no possibility of success in an appeal, and she refused the minister leave to appeal, despite that he's instructed his legal team to petition the Supreme Court directly. So it looks like uh, this is still not over and mm. uh, the, the legal process will carry on. And unfortunately, the minister has deep pockets when it comes to legal fees. Uh, so it looks like there'll be at least another month followed by several more months before this is finally decided. Mm. And Mr. Becker, uh, one or some of the contention by the minister, uh, according to journalists who've covered uh, this particular court case, is that his argument is, uh, uh, he's basically basing it on some of the comments that you've made in the media, where you talk about how unfortunate it is that uh, government is spending uh, money, for instance, on pursuing nuclear power, etc. What, what did you think of that, that argument there? Mm. That's a very important point, you know, and the nuclear regulator does not discuss desirability of nuclear. It does not make government policy in any way. It sticks to one subject or it ought to stick to one subject, and that is whether a nuclear installation is safe according to the safety standards or not safe. And if it's safe, it should be allowed to go ahead as far as the nuclear regulator is concerned. And if it's not safe, it should be stopped. So that is nothing to do with the desirability of nuclear nuclear power. And what myself and my legal team argue is that members of the board have gone, other members of the board have gone on public uh, interviews and so on, saying mm. nuclear power is a fantastic idea and they support it. And that is fine because when they come to the board, they need to leave that behind. We don't discuss desirability of nuclear power. We only discuss safety issues. And the same should apply to me. I should be free to express my opinion of government spending, of ESCOM policy, of things the minister have done, has done because that is nothing to do with my role on the board where it's purely safety. So we argued that that was irrelevant 
and that they cannot use a position on the board to try and muzzle a member of civil society in a way that I can no longer speak about anything or I can't criticize ESCOM or criticize the government in any way. I thought that was just a wrong understanding of the law and mm. it was also one of the motivations why I thought it was important to pursue this through the High Court. Mm. And, you know, talking about Kuburg, you're part of uh, the Kuburg Alert, Alert Alliance, and this is South Africa's only uh, nuclear power station at the moment, Unit 1, uh, being taken down, I think, from about October uh, last year. We've been told that it will be switched on, uh, hopefully, by December. Some experts have been saying that it's the, uh, you know, the closure of that particular unit or the switching off of that particular unit that has brought us to where we are today or that it contributes. Um, are you happy with the processes that have been taken that have taken place rather so far at Kuburg before uh, December comes along I mean that's in about six months time now yeah so there's a big question mark over that in my mind and mm. if we look back at the history of the long outages that have happened at Kuburg it started coincidentally the first outage started on the same day I was suspended from the board that was the 18th <laughs> of January in 2020 uh, when was it now 20 um, 22 and 22, yeah. uh, that was in order to replace the steam generators and that was quite widely reported that that project had to be aborted uh, that ESCOM weren't really ready for that so that outage which ended up being seven months was actually almost a pointless outage because they have to do unit two again uh, possibly from December or sometime like that they're going to take it offline again for six months and the same happens with unit one it's now been offline supposedly for six months but the latest it's only going to come online in September which means it's a nine-month outage and if you add that up um, including a six-month outage for unit one again starting in July 2024 then you come to uh, at least two years where one unit has been down and each unit is about 900 and something uh, megawatts let's call it a uh, thousand megawatts and as you know a thousand megawatts is one stage of load shedding mm -hmm. so if they hadn't taken this misguided decision to take the unit offline then purely from a security of supply issue we would be at one stage less of load shedding at the moment Mm. And just my last question, and very quickly, if you could just be brief, Mr. Becker, how is the communication between the different boards that are looking after the same issue? This is what South Africans have been asking. We have three ministers uh, looking after the same issue uh, pertaining to load shedding, and then there's different boards as well, including the one that you're a part of. And you're saying that the decision to switch mm. off Unit 1 was firstly misguided. Obviously, there was someone who supported that decision. So how's the um, communication and correlation uh, across all the boards to sort out what we're facing today mm. with load shedding. Mm. So just to clarify again, the NNR mm. has no, no part of those decisions, the commercial yeah. viability of it all, that is done between the um, DPE, uh, Public mm. Enterprises, and ESCOM itself. So in so terms you, of you, communication you can't, you on can't that even matter, advise no them. communication. Okay. Uh, I beg your pardon? I was saying, so you, you can't even advise at all? Not in my role as an okay. NNR board member. That has a very clear prescribed duties. But mm. in my um, capacity as, a, as an energy activist and a member of civil society, I feel yeah. I can make comments about that. And partly mm. that's what this court case was about, to preserve the right of civil society to speak out freely. Mm, and for them not to actually have the lines blurred and now come at you for your job when you were just talking about your concerns. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us, Peter Becker.